Okay, there, I'm, I'm Randy Allen. There's no, in, you know, we're in the small time here. There's no introducers here to, to come in, so I get to inter introduce myself. Um, if you look at my bio, one of the things you'll see there is that I'm, my undergraduate is at Harvard. Um, what it doesn't say there is that I'm class of 77. One of the things you find about, out about members of the class of 77 of Harvard is they're almost instantly gonna tell you they're members of class of 77, but they're never gonna do it the way I did by coming out saying I'm a member of the class of 77. They're gonna turn around and start talking about all the times they had breakfast with Bill or how they advised Bill on his career, uh, you know, or how you know, you know, they told, told Bill to do this and that. Bill being Bill Gates. So when you're in the same class as Bill Gates, uh, you, know, you, never, you always have to bring it up but you never do it directly. You always come around and work to it. So for me, you got it directly. I've done my oblig obligatory reference to Bill. But the reason I wanted to put that in wasn't sort of directly for, as a push for the class of 77. It was because I was at Harvard in the middle of what was the biggest revolution, beginning of the biggest revolution in computer science. The one lesson I learned there is that it's not the hardware that counts, it's the software. And that's been repeated over and over and over. You know, it was Apple in the early days, internet, everything. It's always the software that counts, far more than hardware. Um, to me, that's one of the really key things with RISC-V, because for all the stuff that we do with RISC-V, for all the effort that's put into hardware, it's gonna be the software that eventually determines whether it succeeds or not. Okay, so that's the importance of the software. Second story. Um, those of you who are software people, I'm sure you've all read the, the book, The Mythical Man by Fred Brooks. And one of the key messages in that, the one I learned very early and very hard is, plan to throw the first one away. You may or may not do it, but you, you might as well plan on it, because if you don't plan for it, you're gonna be in real trouble when you have to come around and do it. Um, I believe that applies to hardware as well. Uh, and actually, one of the reasons I'm really excited about RISC-V and one of the reasons I came to Sci-5 is exactly because of that. We've had 40, 50 years of developing different architectures and doing different things in the world in terms of hardware. Um, but they've really all been first tries. You know, it's really time to throw out everything we've done so far and start all over again. And so, RISC-V is actually the perfect stuff for doing that. You know, there's good, good sides and bad sides of that. Good side is it gets you to come in and do the architecture, do the software, do everything really clean. Bad side is you got a lot of software to catch up and port on. There's a big job out there. So that's lesson number two. Lesson number three, I was at um, a Berkeley conference and Dave Patterson got up about 10 years ago and started talking about the end of Moore's Law and what it implied. Uh, and what he basically said was, because of the end of Moore's Law, hardware guys didn't know what else to do, couldn't do anything else. So they decided to throw up a Hail Mary and hope that the software guys would come underneath and catch it for them. Uh, that's what I've used software as for Sci-5, for RISC-V as well. Uh, you know, it is gonna be the software all in all in the end that makes this stuff work and that comes around out of it. So three big messages out of here, you know, and probably the only thing you need to remember from this talk. Uh, number one, it's the software that's gonna make it succeed. Number two, RISC-V is in the position to do things that no one else has done before and become the big thing in the future. And number three, while RISC-V has a little bit better than the chance in that, it really is a combination of the hardware and software that's gonna make things succeed. Okay, so, saw the title, I kind of came into this, I saw the title State of the Union, wasn't quite sure what to present. Uh, you know, but what I thought I'd sort of come up with, you know, key part on this, all this is the technical side, but you look at a State of the Union, there's lots of things that you tend to cover in that. Uh, you know, there's everything from the economic side of things, the, uh, you know, satisfaction of things, the growth, that type of thing, stuff like that. Um, so, you know, spend some time, I'm not going to go into boring technical details too deep, but give some time giving you the, um, you know, some of the progress that's being made in the software side of things, because uh, it actually is really a lot, really exciting. A little bit of the big picture sort of recognizing things. I know when I put up a chart like this, I know always I'm gonna get some flack somewhere. But you know, what I did was just go through the sponsors for uh, the RISC-V Foundation real quick and pull out roughly all the ones I could immediately recognize as software companies. Uh, on one hand, there's a lot up there. On the other hand, if you compare that to the number of hardware companies, uh, it's a small fraction. Uh, you know, in, in terms of the 
effort on RISC V right now. Huge amounts on hardware, relatively small amounts on software. One of the things that's going to have to change, and, and one of the things in terms of the State of the Union that I want to put up is we really need to work on changing that. You know, and part of my job, having just come to sci-fi within the last three months, is to help catalyze that change and make that change go throughout the, uh, you know, the world. Um, you know, so like I said, I'll spend a lot of time on the technical side, uh, you know, a little bit on satisfaction future. But the really key message from my point of view is the state of software right now in RISC-V is very exciting. Uh, because we're getting to the point, it's been a lot of work, we're getting to the point where we're getting the base platform software in place. We're actually beginning to do the interesting stuff. So now we've got the era, era where the golden age can really begin, particularly coming in with getting the vector unit and the really high computation facilities. My background, for you guys who don't know it, is vectorizing compilers. Uh, you know, I, I, I thrive on building vectorizing compilers. I did my PhD dissertation on it. Uh, you know, I've worked with that stuff ever since, built some of the best vectorizing compilers in the world. But for me, this is the area that really opens up the really exciting stuff going forward. So I think we're hitting a really exciting time in RISC V, soft, RISC v in particular, and software in general, and software in particular. So, RISC V, quick summary. We've accomplished a lot. You know, I'll go through some slides giving, you know, illustrations, giving you a little bit of a picture of it. But big picture is, you know, you're talking about a chip that's been around for at most 10 years. I'm trying to think. I um, actually have a, one of the very first RISC V chips off somewhere in my house. I need to dig it up. I uh, taught a course on vectorizing compilers at Berkeley. And the reward I got for it was a Berkeley jacket because I accidentally wore a Stanford t-shirt to, to teach the class one day. Those guys didn't go too well with that. And I got a plaque that had a RISC V chip in it, which surprised me because at that point, this was 2011, I think. I didn't realize that universities actually could have enough money to tape out chips. Uh, so I was really impressed. Still have those away there. But big picture, you look at a chip that's been around for 10 years, going against, you know, on one side, ARM that's been around for 30 years, Intel that's been around for 50, others have been around for a long time. It's made amazing progress in software. There's a lot of software to catch up on. Uh, you know, just some of the examples. You know, we're now at the point, you know, we've got basically LLVM, you know, we've got LLVM supporting RISC-V. GCC is the point when it's really, you know, in terms of sci-fi stuff, which we're upstreaming now, actually pretty much supporting the entire, you know, chips, including the vector interface at this point, sort of very basic support on that. Uh, that's a big step forward. That's the first thing you have to do in terms of anything, in terms of no compiler, you have no software. Free RTOS, you know, Sci-Fi's been putting a lot of work in on that, as well as other companies and other groups. And, you know, it's at the point where right now we have free RTOS that's certified by AWS, and are pushing to get something that's really a completely usable thing within the next three to four months. Lots of Linux kernel improvements. And the one part which I will spend some time talking on, Mark Thronzo will spend a lot more time later on this afternoon, is on vector, getting a vector programming enablement. You know, we now have the very basic programming solution, so when the vector chips actually come out, you can actually program it and start doing stuff with them, you know, in things other than assembly. Um, I mean, th I think that's the big step forward. So we've done a lot, but there's still a lot yet to be done. So going in a little more details, you know, sort of have three or four charts here where I sort of surveyed the basic platform software and the things that are, you know, have been done and doing there. Present means it's stuff that's out there right now. Near future means it's going to appear very shortly or it's not very far away. And roadmap means that I found someone who's roughly willing somewhere or another to commit to getting it done in the future. Uh, you know, so you know, no definitive time frame on it, but there is someone at least interested enough to sort of make a semi-commitment to it. Okay, so in terms of the compilers, you know, the GCC, which has been the compiler for RISC-V since the early Berkeley days, is now at the point when it supports the RISC-V architecture such as it is, bin utils, you know, you can write all the vector instructions in it, all the bin utils and everything supports it, come around and doing it. You know, it's at 7.1 right now. Uh, we actually internally and upstreaming as fast as the draft gets accepted, uh, have things going at 8.0 as well, at 0 0.8. LLVM has been an experimental branch up to this point without the vector unit. That experimental branch will become a official branch, you know, officially supported back in, uh, you know, very shortly whenever the next cycle comes around. Still doesn't have all the vector instructions in it, but actually having a really solid LLVM back in, big step forward. 
Um, there are other utilities around that support it. IAR supports RISC V at this point. Other things that have gone on in the compilers, you know, one of the very first things that came out as problems with the, um, or as issues with the RISC V was code size. Um, and been big efforts putting down to reduce the code size. Uh, you know, part of that is you know, coming out, AI, IAR compilers out there, Sega libraries are out there, they get the code size down to pretty much close to the same thing as ARM. There are other efforts going on to improve the compilers as well, so big things around all that. Big picture down the road, you know, down the end. One of the exciting things for me about RISC-V is having a vector fixed point, you know, vector fixed point computation engine. We want to have compilers to go and do that, and that's one of the things Sci-5 is going to make a big effort on. OS and bare metal support. Um, you know, you can't do a whole lot. You know, first thing you have to have is compilers, because if you don't have compilers, you can't generate code. Next thing you have to have is an OS or something to run and run the things on. Uh, you know, those are the two things that you have to have in basics of any platform. So, you know, in terms of out there, you know, we've got Sci-Fi has been supporting free, Freedom Metal sort of base level for a long time. You know, it's a lot of work to do there. We're getting it up. But we're actually getting to the point when it's really getting solid. And in particular, the thing we want to do is use the stack there as the basics for Linux stack and have them one unified stack so it would be much more easier to modify and, and maintain. Um, similarly, Linux support, you know, we're coming around and getting the kernels up, getting more drivers, extending the support. Uh, but ex expectation is over the next year to get something that you'd really call a full production Linux. Finally, I mentioned free RTOS. You know, just last week, uh, AWS certified the free RTOS, and it was demonstrated at the reInvent show. We're going on continuing work on that, both to make it a much solid vehicle in all sorts of ways, from security to, you know, whatever, you know. It's hard to call it, say what a complete free RTOS board is, but we're getting it at as much as you can define that, you know, working on that really hard. Security, uh, you know, fair number of people working out there on security. The only ones I'm really familiar with is the Sci-5 stuff. And again, in terms of details, Danny Nativel, who's one of the driving stuff for Sci-5, well, you know, made a presentation yesterday. Uh, you can get, get him and get more details of it. But, you know, we have both Sci-5 Shield as well as Secure Boot, and also, you know, just coming out in the next quarter or so, Sci-Fi World Guard, which are both sort of the basic security things, and both of which we're working with other partners and industry to expand and make it to be the real open source types of solution that people want. Um, simulators, um, given there's not, you know, their hardware is just coming out, simulators are really important. Kimi has been something out there that's been sort of lagging around. Uh, it's supporting, but it hasn't had real support. You know, we're picking it up and going to make it make it a fully supported simulator. Spike is the simulator of choice for RISC-V. You know, we've been maintaining that, pulled it up complete to the, it's always up to date to the current vector unit, 0.8 draft. Out there, open source, available for everyone to use. You know, it's been a big effort on that. There are other simulators out there as well. You know, OVV, OV, RISC OVVP sim from Empiris being, you know, sort of the one main one's been out there early. You know, another part, um, Sci-5 has an internal cycle approximate simulator, which is going to put out and make available, you know, sometime in the near future uh, as yet another way to be able to run things and estimate things before you have the actual hardware there. And finally, my favorite vector fixed point environment. Um, so, you know, currently, in terms of GCC, you know, we have full support in terms of bin utils. You can code in assembly and stuff like that. One of the things Mark will talk about today and that Yunsup announced yesterday is the vector enablement program. With it, it lets you, um, you know, it gives you vector intrinsics. So you can basically code in assembly at the C level. Uh, it has an optimized BLAS and optimized, highly optimized FFT. And it has support compliant with the CMS, CMS DSP library. Uh, so you have some ability to porting things out. That's gonna get rolled out to special customers within the near future. And the key, key thing we're focusing a lot of development on after that is developing the right vector fixed point environment, the right vector fixed point development environment. Okay, so a little bit of survey through there. I mean, the summary of all that, I, like I said, I didn't want to go into details. And I know that by presenting some amount of that, I'm overlooking a lot that's going on out there. Uh, but the big picture of that is we've really got a lot done right now. There's a lot that's going on. Uh, and more than anything else, we're re really reaching to the point for the first time in, in development where you've got basically what you call the basic 
things you need for developing software on a, on a RISC-V platform, you know, including the vector unit, everything in there. Uh, all the platform basics are there, which to me means we're really reaching the exciting time things, because once you get that, then you start moving up to the application software. And you can move to wide ranges of things. It will really open up what I believe is the golden age of, of RISC-V software. Um, um, you know, it's good news and bad news of that. You know, like I said, do, doing it the second time, throwing the first one away and doing things the second time. Good news is it's a lot easier the second time, and it's a lot better the second time. The bad news is there's a lot of software to catch up there on, so it's going to take you some time. You know, when you've got 30 years, 50 years of experience to catch up on, it takes a little while to do that. So there's some big challenges out there. But to me, we're really entering the time when it's going to be the interesting part for, um, for RISC-V software. And in particular, you know, if you look at RISC-V software, if you look at any, the way, the way systems are going developing nowadays, you know, it's like the lottery. Many will enter, few will win. In terms of RISC-V, there are going to be many that will program. There are going to be very few in the long run of design. So very exciting time to me. What do we need to do over the next couple of years for success? Um, part of what I view my job as, you know, is completing the foundation software, getting the base level stack, software stack up and running. Uh, that's not something that Sci-5 won't, you know, something it'd like to be as a community effort more than just Sci-5 alone. Sci-5 sort of goes and pushes the software because we're the guys out pushing the hardware as well. But this is the type of thing where we want to have it be a cooperative effort and work with lots of companies rather than just uh, us doing all the work. Unleashing the, quote, unwashed masses of open source. Uh, you know, all Sci-5 software is open source and all RISC-V software more or less is open source. Um, but one of the things is there's no real coordination. You know, there are lots of people hacking on open source in isolation where they're working around together and coordinated. And one of the things I view in my job is to help to coordinate that and bring some coordination to that so people are working together and doing coordinated things um, rather than just sort of hacking on things as it goes. One of the, be one of my big missions over the next uh, year is coming around and you know, helping to make that happen. Uh, Want to build up the software community. You know, now that we've got the platform out there, we really need to get a lot more people out working on it and, and unleash the things on that. And then you know, we're reaching the time Hopefully it gets engaged just because the platform is so interesting, but you know, we've now got enough there where it's really interesting to get the third party platform vendors involved. So, lots of challenges ahead, you know, and those are building up the software community, completing Linux, completing the you know, SOC support, getting a world class pro uh, programming environment. But you know, we've gotten a lot done, and like I said, to me it's a really exciting time. Uh, I think it's probably the best time to be a software guy uh, you know, anywhere in the world, but particularly in the RISC-V world. So it's one of the things where, you know, just for the RISC-V community as a whole, not just uh, Sci-5, uh, you know, it's a time to sort of band together and really, you know, it will be the part that makes a difference in the success of RISC-V or not as a software community. Got time for one or two questions if there are any. So. I didn't put you all to sleep. I, you know, being the first one after lunch, you always hate to, to be those. It's like my thesis advisor said, uh, you know your technical career is dead the first time you give an after dinner talk. Uh, you know, almost that bad after lunch. There is a question there. So, so the question is, um, given that vectorization, there have been vector platforms for a long time. Why do I feel that now that vectorization is a critical part or a key part of RISC-V and how we'll come around and do it? So a couple of things on that. I did my PhD dissertation in 1983. It was on vectorizing compilers. The software was a huge, it was very successful. Uh, it was, you know, back those days you didn't have open source, but it was used by IBM in, in taking it and made it into a product and lots of things. You know, sounds a little bit arrogant, but basically technology hasn't changed since then. What did change, you know, the reason vectorizing compilers got a little bit of a bad rap was you moved into the 90s and so on you had the speed up of Moore's laws, and you had all the different companies coming around and doing it, and you had the parallel Linux systems coming around. That people just, you know, it wasn't a failure of the compilers. It just wasn't worth the effort on people's part to do any type of vectorization or stuff because, you know, wait two years, you get 2x speed up uh, coming around to it. So they got a little bit of a bad rap, but, you know, it is clear that vectorizing compiler can do really great jobs on all sorts of things. We're now at the point when Moore's law no longer applies. 
And you know, it is a way, it, you know, it takes a little bit. You can't just throw any code at a vectorizing compiler and do it, but you write reasonable code and you can get really fantastic results out of it. So I don't know that it's critical, but I think that the vector unit opens up a wide range of applications, everything from AI to DSP and stuff, and that taking advantage of that can be a huge win for RISC-V. Okay. I think I'm out of time at this point, so we'll pass it on to the next one.